Try to get a sense of your breath right now. When you breathe in, where do you feel it? When you breathe out, where do you feel it? Is it the kind of breathing the mind can stay with, or do you need to change? Maybe uncomfortable, or maybe too subtle. If it's too subtle, breathe more heavily. If it's uncomfortable, try to breathe in a way that's more easeful, soothing for the body. After all, the breath is the force of life. As the body expands and contracts to bring the air in and expel the old air. It should feel good. This is what keeps you alive. So if it doesn't feel good, it's a sign you haven't been paying attention. So pay some attention to what you're doing right now as you breathe in and as you breathe out. And bring the two qualities that the Buddha said he wanted to see in any student. One is that the student be honest. In other words, you really are clear and true about what you do. You don't try to hide it. Because if you hide it from other people, you start hiding it from yourself. So you're open and above board. And second, that you're observant. That you see things that are not necessarily pointed out to you. After all, who pointed out the way to awakening to the Buddha? He had to find it himself. And even though he points the way, we still have to figure out his instructions, try to put them into practice, see what works and what doesn't work. That requires that we look all around. In the forest tradition, they put a big emphasis on this, starting with the external level, what needs to be done. Sometimes you're not told. You're simply told, oh, this wasn't right. And you should look to see, well, when other people do this, how do they do it? Or something's not quite right, look around, see what should be done. Don't expect to have all the instructions handed to you, because a large part of the meditation is learning to be observant for yourself, learning to develop your powers of judgment, pass judgment on your powers of judgment so you can see whether or not developed yet and what you can do to develop them. In other words, it comes from a desire to know, a desire to figure things out. Not just simply go through the motions of living a life. After all, if the Buddha had gone through the motions, he would have stayed a prince, lived a royal life, and then passed away without accomplishing much. But it's because he wanted to live a good life. And then he had to look around. What possibilities are there? What things have not been pointed out to him? Because when we're born into this world, we don't come with a set of instructions saying, this is the best way to live. You have to look around, be observant. That's how you learn. And that's how you go beyond just following instructions. Our schools are good at teaching us to follow instructions. And they're not so good at teaching ingenuity. The Buddha wants us to be ingenious. He wants us to be observant. Because our defilements are going to hide in places we may not expect. So try to develop these qualities of honesty and being observant in your daily life and then bring them into your meditation. And that way you develop the qualities that the Buddha said helps nourish the Dhamma, which is the fact that you commit yourself, you really honestly commit yourself to the practice. And you're very observant in your powers of reflection and the results you're getting. It's in this way that the practice becomes a skill.